It's time for the MapReduce lab where you get a chance to actually build and run some of the code that uh, I was using previously. So this lab is a code that parses a Wikipedia dump. The Wikipedia dump consists of a bunch of text files that have been uploaded into S3 where every Wikipedia page, the XML for it has been put on a separate line. That means that you can process that data without having to worry about issues of splitting XML across lines. And the output from this is top bigrams, so it's a standard thing of like counting the occurrence of character pairs. And the output from it is tab separated value text files. You actually wind up with two sets of outputs. One is just the raw data, and then there's a second job which winds up sorting that, so you get sorted counts where it's sorted from high to low by bigram occurrence. In order to run this lab, you've got to be set up in AWS, which means you've got an AWS account set up. You've done all the things that we talked about at the very beginning where you need to uh, access to request access for Elastic MapReduce. Uh, you need to make sure you've got your AWS Management Console um, working. And then if that's all good, now you can go and you can download the Wikipedia Lab. Uh, it's located in an S3 bucket, of course, wikipedialab.tgz. Once you've downloaded it, you can expand it. And then inside of that expanded directory, there's a readme file. And that's something that you should then uh, read through once and then follow the instructions. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, we're in the directory. If I list, you can see there's a, there's actually two readmes. One is the readme, uh, which is about the lab. There's another one called readme-splitting, which talks about how to use a second tool that's part of this lab that is actually the thing that generated these split XML files. So if I go and I open up that readme file, uh, it talks about the prerequisites here. And then it has some steps. So one of the first things you've got to do is go and create a bucket in S3. As we talked about before, you need to have a bucket in S3 uh, where your job jar is located. And also that's where your logs are going to wind up and the results are going to go. So let's switch over to the AWS console. Let's go into S3. And the very first thing we want to do here is we want to create that bucket. And remember, bucket names have to be globally unique. So in this case, I'm going to use AWS test 99. You should use something different like AWS dash test dash and your initials. Then inside that bucket, we create a couple folders. So one of them is called job, and this is where we're going to upload the job jar. Uh, we have another one called logs, and we've got a third one called results. So now S3 is all set up, so we can actually go and build the job jar. So we're going to switch back to the terminal, and I can do an ant clean job. And what this thing's going to do is compile the code, and it's going to build that standard Hadoop job jar. You can see the output is right here in build Wikipedia ngrams job dot jar. So now I can upload that into the job directory here. And so I have to pick the file that I want to upload. So I'm going to go to my desktop, into my EMR folder, into the Wikipedia lab, and inside of build, there's my Wikipedia ngrams job jar. Select that to do the upload. I think it's about seven or eight megabytes, so it'll take maybe 20 seconds to do this. Now if I switch back over to the instructions, you can see that after I build the job jar here, um, it lets me know that I can actually try and run that same job jar from the command line just to give it a try. So I'm going to copy this right here. This assumes, of course, that I've got Hadoop set up on my local machine here, where I can actually give it a try to run it. And it goes and it runs through the two different jobs, one to create the bigram counts and the second one to actually sort them from high to low. When it's done, there's going to be output written out to build test sorted counts. So if I take a look at that, you can see I've got a part file in there. And if I do a more on that part file, you can see I've got Bigrams here with counts. E space occurs 4,025 times. Now if we go back over here, you can see that um, we are now in a position where we can actually define our job flow. And this is the same set of uh, steps that we went through at the very beginning here of this entire course. So I'm going to go back over to the AWS Management Console. I'm going to switch to Elastic MapReduce. And I'm going to create a new job flow. So the first thing I do is give it a reasonable name, like Wikipedia Lab. 
and we are running our own application and the job type is a custom jar. This next step here I have to specify where the job is that I've uploaded into S3. So it's in this bucket inside the job directory. It's Wikipedia ngrams job.jar and then I've got my jar arguments. So I'm going to flip back over to here to the instructions and there it shows that I need to specify an input file path here and an output directory and a few other parameters. I'm going to grab those, paste them in here. So the input file we're processing one of the roughly 117 part files so we're going to process part 100. The output directory here has a placeholder for my bucket which is AWS test 99 of course and that results directory that I previously created. I'm going to process 10% of it. I'm going to use a single reducer so that I wind up with one output file, one part file that has everything sorted in it. Now I get to set up the size of the cluster so I can use an M1 small for the master, that's fine. I'm going to use two M1 larges for the core instance group which is what actually is running the task tracker and the data nodes. Here I've set up my EC2 key pair to be AWS test in case I wanted to log into the master. The location of the logs files, uh, now note that here it's an S3n colon slash slash uh, protocol that I have to specify and uh, because this is something that's getting passed to Hadoop. Bucket name is again AWS test 99 and it's the log subdirectory in there that I previously created. I don't need any special debugging and I don't need to keep the cluster alive when I'm done. I don't have any special bootstrap actions. So here I can double check all the settings of the job and if it looks right I can say I want to create the job flow. So what's going to happen here is status will be starting for a couple minutes as it uh, acquires all the servers that I need for my cluster and then provisions them with Hadoop and actually starts running the job. And once the job starts running, then the status here will change to running and it'll start tracking my total elapsed time for the job. I'll start getting charged. And remember how we talked about pricing being a step function. So instantly I'm going to get charged for one hour's worth of time, which in this case will be roughly, I don't know, 90 cents given the size of the cluster that I've got. Now at this point, it's still starting up, but I do have a master public DNS name. So it's gotten that far in the process of setting up the cluster. So I can copy that and then I can switch back over to the terminal window. And now what I can do is set up a proxy so that I can actually use the Hadoop GUI to watch what's going on with my job. So to set up a proxy, um, you'll see that in the Wikipedia lab, I already copied this AWS test.pem file, which is the private key file that I created and then downloaded using the AWS management console previously. So at this point I can SSH and I can specify I want to use that file. And here I need to specify the port and uh, normally by default you'd set up as port 8157. I use port 6666. And then you need to be proxying as the Hadoop user to that master public DNS. And if I do that, it's going to say, is this one something that I want to add to my known host? And I say yes. And now it's proxying. So if I switch back over to here and I refresh, you'll see that I'm now running. At this point, if I open up um, a new window and I access that public uh, master, uh, the master public DNS at port 9100, I'll get the Hadoop GUI. And for this to work, I have Foxy Proxy installed and configured and running. And that's something that I talked about way back at the very first section about how to, how to follow instructions to do that. Um, so at this point, the cluster set up. Uh, the job hasn't actually been submitted, so I don't have any running jobs yet. Um, if I refresh, eventually I'll see the running job. There's the running job. And I can drill into it, right? These are all links just like the regular Hadoop GUI. So you can see here that I'm 75% of the way done on the map side. Now, one of the limitations of this with Elastic MapReduce is I can drill into uh, the map tasks, and in fact, I can then look at an individual map task and the issue is if I click here on the logs what it's trying to do is access um, an IP address and that IP address is an internal only IP address that Foxy Proxy doesn't know how to proxy because it's proxying based on uh, patterns 
and that's just a random IP address. So there is some limit. However, I can click on counters, and I will get all the counters here. For example, pages parsed, pages skipped, ngrams created. These are my custom counters that are set up in that Wikipedia lab. Um, if I go here and refresh, uh, the lab is still running. So I can back out here up to the top level for the particular job. And if I refresh here, you can see that it's actually finished up. Um, it finished all six map tasks and all three reduced tasks. And I've got a total of about uh, 10,000 pages that I parsed. And if I go back over here and refresh, uh, at this point, it's essentially in its uh, finishing up stage where what it's doing is copying logs from the cluster into S3. So it'll take, depending on the size of the logs, anywhere from just a few minutes to, you know, if you go crazy with lots and lots of logging, it could take uh, 10 or 15 minutes to copy, you know, millions of lines of, of log data from your, uh, from what's getting, what was created in your HDFS cluster up into S3. So if I go over to S3, in anticipation of that copying finishing up. Here I can see the list of buckets that I previously created. I've got this one bucket. And over here you can see I've got the directories I created, job, logs, and results. If I look in the results directory, you can see I've got two output directories, raw counts and sorted counts. Sorted counts is the final step of a two-step job. So here's a part file. If I double click on that part file, it's going to set up to download it, but I'm going to open it up with BB Edit, my editor of choice. And what I'll see are a list of all the n-grams. The first one, the most common one, is two spaces followed by ER, E space, etc. If I go back over here and I go up to the bucket and I look in the logs directory here, I'm going to see a list of all the jobs that I've run, you know, and each one of these is a unique job number. So I would uh, have to switch back over to Elastic MapReduce, and I could get the job number. And then once I had the job number, I'd be able to drill into the directory here, and I would see in here a bunch of subdirectories, one for each sort of aspect of the job. The one where my logging is is going to be inside of steps, inside of directory one. And here you'd see, for example, standard out. This is where... Uh, my logs will go to. And you can see it's just the regular dump for both jobs, the original job that was creating the n-grams, and then the second job that was sorting them.